Alrighty, my friends, we are back for one last run, and it looks like I'm, I have some pets with these dogs and cats on the stream. <laughs> this is going to be super fun because we have a special uh, couple of guests to help cast for this final, final run of the day. We have two of the uh, hyperspace devs. We have Swift Tiger and Admiral Billy. Welcome both of you to the stream. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. All right. Just so we know who who's looking at who, Swift Tiger, are you the dog or the cat? I am the cat. Okay. Yeah, he Swift is Tiger's Swift Tiger is the cat. Yeah. That is yeah, perfect. I am the tiger. <laughs> so that that means Admiral Billy is this amazing picture of a surprise dog. I love it. Oh yes, Mr. Bubs, <laughs> everyone's favorite. <laughs> well, thank you both so much for joining us, and we have to really thank you because hyperspace is kind of making a lot of this possible. Um, the the whole seated run, um, kind of making us giving us updated uh, mods. Do you want to talk a little bit, uh, Swift Tiger, about kind of all the work that goes into this and kind of making this this kind of thing possible? Yeah, it's it's crazy that like something like this is even happening because I, I never envisioned, like uh, when making the, the Seeds feature, I never envisioned like an actual tournament happening. It was just going to be like um, friends playing the same run together and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Well, this. it's crazy, and it's and it's awesome because the tools that you all are creating are not just making this possible. You're making things like multiverse possible, eldritch horrors, all, all the things that are kind of kind of revitalizing, uh, you know, the 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 FTL modding community. I feel like it's exploded since hyperspace. Uh, Admiral Billy, is this is this something that's kind of reignited your passion for modding and kind of interacting with all the other modders in the community? One hundred percent. Multiverse is the reason I joined the hyperspace team to begin with. I just saw what hyperspace was doing and was just wild. So like, I started, you know, looking into what it takes to make these sorts of features, and then I started adding little things of my own here and there. Swift is still responsible for a lot of the like more complex things, but I've been working on a lot of nice little things myself. So well, that's awesome. I do want to announce, or at least. Uh, you know, acknowledge that there are other folks on the hyperspace dev team. You, you all can yes. tell me if, if I'm right or wrong, but I, th I believe everyone is on my list here is Winderps. Uh, I hate snow, I think is how to say that one. <laughs> uh, Laszlo Gast and MathChamp, who I know really well because he hangs out in my stream all the time. Is that the is that the full hyperspace dev team? Yeah, and then us too, yeah. That's that's awesome. It's it's really cool to have you guys here, and I want to really get into the nitty gritty of hyperspace with you soon. But we're gonna do that once we get into the run. So let's introduce our contestants for this final run of the day. We have first of all Billy One Kirby, who had a great run yesterday, is gonna be joining us. Billy, can you hear me? Are you there? I can indeed. I'm happy to be here, ready to uh, hopefully not die in FTL. Hopefully not die in FTL. That is my goal most weeks. And uh, what you, I sure, experience chat wants to see every time, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, well, you had a great run yesterday, so that means you're going to actually get first ban in our pick and back ban uh, section. But your opponent is going to be Super Bob. Super Bob, are you there? Can you hear me? I can. How's it going? Hope everybody's having a good night. Ready to finish it up with a good run here. Every time I see Qui Gon Jin, I get just a little bit intimidated by your by your picture there. This is, That's this good. Is I'm going to need all the help I can get. <laughs> Sadly, I don't think Billy One Kirby is intimidated at all, are you? <laughs> oh, I'm, I don't know. I'm just intimidated by FTL mostly. We'll just see how what FTL has to say about this this competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to do the pick ban. I, I, I have to make one more comment because having a dog, a cat, and Qui Gon Jin all on the chat makes are all on the screen makes this the most exciting uh, uh, match we've had yet. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so for the pick ban, uh, I was kind of continuing Freddy's uh, kind of idea of going mean, so I chose the Stealth C for my uh, for my possible ship to be played. Uh, Admiral Billy, what was your choice? Uh, I went for the plain and simple NGA. NGA, a little bit nicer for sure. And then uh, Swift Tiger, what was your choice? I chose Fed A. I don't want to be too mean. <laughs> For Hyperspace now. devs are like, we're already mean enough doing <laughs> things in FTL to you, right? <laughs> Alrighty, so that means, Billy Kirby, you have uh, the choice. You can either ban first or ban second. Which are you going to choose? I'll ban first. All right. Uh, I'm going to ban the NGA. Ban the NGA, okay. 
All right, and that leaves it up to you, uh, Super Bob. What are you going to ban, and what are you all going to play? I'm going to ban the Stealth C. All right, and Stealth C. Let's let's get some stinky humanitis up in here. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I can't wait to see how many humans get vented this run. So I know that we've already set up seeds, but I'm going to wait for um, Kasalian to get us over to the other scene because I do want to let chat know what the seed is so that they can play along with you if they are uh, so inclined. So the seed is going to be 6124563. Just to repeat that, it's going to be 6124563. And Wildman Super Bob going to have the fuel ship. I like it. Um, Although you do have to do Fed A, not Kestrel A. <laughs> All righty, just wait until we get Kestrel A. There we go. All right. Now I'm saying the wrong shit. Fed A. Like Kassalian, my brain's a little fried, so I apologize to uh, both Billy and Swift if my brain gets a little crazy here. It's all right. fine, don't worry. <laughs> Swift himself yeah, um, is kind of on the uh, <laughs> on the nail left. As well. <laughs> so we can like take a nap together, Swift, and let Admiral Billy just have all the fun. Right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. All righty. All right, so we're just getting a couple last things closed off here before we're ready. I see seeds correct. I see uh, Fede on both sides. Billy, are you ready to go? I am ready. Wildman Super Bob, I'm going to let you close the thing you need to close here. Sure, yeah. We're just making sure all notifications are down so we don't hear some funky sounds on the stream. Boop. Although, if we have some like YouTube videos in the background, it might be fun, you know. I think so. It should be. It blanked out my screen, so I'm not sure. And I don't want to go off screen because you've asked me not to. Okay, I think I think we're looking good. So, Wildman, you are good to go, sir? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, go. All right, Fed A is our final ship of the day. Uh, Swift and Billy, I mean, you, you all probably played a lot of vanilla FTL before you got into the modding, I'm guessing. Is that right? Honestly, I, I don't, I haven't played that much. Like, I'm pretty sure I've spent like 10 times the amount of hours I've played, um, just like working on hyperspace. And personally, I dove in the modding fairly early. If my vanilla hours were enough to like unlock everything, but like beyond that, I just started moving on the modding to all, all kinds of stuff like that, so. Yeah, I guess I, I, uh, Freddy made a, a mention about this earlier. It seems like the people who play it often are the ones who aren't getting into the modding because the modders are like are the ones who like to kind of create new tools and do new stuff with the game. Is that right, Swift? Is is that why you got into modding to kind of unlock new tools and see what cool stuff you could do with kind of the engine that you can work with? Oh. Uh, I, I got okay. this. Uh, I mean, for me at least, that's kind of what I wanted to do. For me, a lot of the features I've been introducing recently have just been little, like, quality of life things that I've always wanted to see in the game. Uh, recently, okay. I did some small things like letting you see the decimal health of your crew a little bit. Oh, wow. There is decimal, the decimal health. health. Okay. <laughs> yes. I rearranged, like, the weapon tooltips so that they don't get as, like, blobby when you have mm -hmm. these custom weapons that have negative system damage, negative crew damage, all that sort of stuff. And... Yeah, I... Oh, sorry. Oh. Go ahead. I also added like the buy and sell price for all augments and drones and okay. uh, weapons. You can see the stats of drone weapons. I, I've been working on all kinds of little stuff like that. Definitely quality of life things. I know that uh, on my stream we do a lot of, uh, you know, kind of ships created by our viewers using super luminal and people love to go crazy. So having oh, yes. like, <laughs> ha being able to see what all these things can do on, you know, you say blobby weapon things. Is that is that does it have to do with like the actual little icon of it, or uh, uh, what exactly the, like, do you mean by that? The stats that you see whenever you okay. like, yeah, you go, you see the required power and the charge time, and then the damage, and then like the status chances are in the middle, separated yeah. from like ion damage and system. It's all over the place. I reorganized it to make it a little more fitting. So things like uh, seeing the fire chances thirty percent for this weapon and that sort of thing. Yes. Well, awesome. These are both really good starts, honestly. Uh, we got a free rock crew, and we have a halberd beam, and both players got both. So that's a nice little mirrored run. Uh, have you guys been able to watch the uh, uh, the earlier streams and earlier the runs for, for the competition? 
Uh, I've been keeping up with like the later half of the uh, matches every day because I'm my sleep schedule's just messed up in general. I'm up quite late, so. <laughs> I hear yeah, that a lot in gaming. <laughs> yes, uh, they've been very exciting though. I've enjoyed them. Well, I'm I'm curious because what, one of the things that's cool to me is getting to see all these different kind of play styles. You know, there's there's a lot of different people who play FTL in very different ways. Oh yes. Uh, when you were <laughs> were you playing in vanilla, what did you like to do? Did you like to play fast? Did you like to be very strategic? How did you like to play the game? Um, I've always been a fairly fast player. The things I tend to enjoy are either like boarding or like pre igniter setups or. Sometimes I enjoy the slower things like fire setups too. <laughs> Everybody loves watching the ship slowly burn down with nothing. Everybody they can do loves about it. fire, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm all over the place. I just like the game. I like everything. <laughs> so how long, uh, Billy, have you been with the hyperspace team? Um, at this point I've been at the team for like two months or so. Okay. Something like that. I tried to do a little more uh, later last year, but that never really came through but then recently you know i sat down made sure i could get things going and yeah i've been working on it since then well i i know that at least for me and a lot of the folks that i interact with on twitch a lot it's it's just kind of a godsend because there's so many cool things that uh hyperspace has been kind of unlocking for for ftl how did how did you discover uh the hyperspace team um well that's what i was saying i went to you know i checked in on like ftl mods every year or so saying like hey what has been going on and then i saw multiverse and i was like what is this completely mm -hmm. new crew unlimited ship slots like mm -hmm. all that sort of thing and then you know i played it and i was just like wow uh, <laughs> and then from that point on i kept trying to give like you know suggestions bug fixes uh troubleshooting that sort of thing and now i'm moving on to actually developing it a little bit so that's super cool. It's it's that's one of the things I love about the FTL community. It's so like it's so interconnected. Everybody who wants to be a part of it can be. There's there's something they could do if they want to play, if they want to stream, if they want to mod it. There's so much cool stuff you can do with the game. Yeah, I know. And like mechanically the game is like it's fairly simple overall. It has a lot of depth to it for surprisingly mm -hmm. simple mechanics. Yeah, there's so many different, you know, system choices, weapon choices, but it doesn't mean there's you're limited in the choices that you can make. Uh, I will say Billy is a little bit ahead here. They're both, I don't know. I, I want to see this halberd beam online, but there's a early heavy laser can be really strong. Yeah, the heavy laser is always one of my favorites. It's just a power efficient weapon. The basic the laser plus. Yeah, power power efficient. And you've got to love those status effects. Like you said, setting oh, yes. people on fire. <laughs> <laughs> fires, breaches, everything. It's Speaking lovely. of fires, Wildman Super Bob, a little, a little bit on fire here. Yeah, but he's, he's fine. <laughs> he's got it under control. It's fine, just like the meme. Everything's fine. We're just a little bit on fire. Just a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I am interested because uh, so many so many people who create ships for me love to add artilleries. What's what's kind of your favorite system to play around with in FTL? Um, I mean, I've always been a big fan of the artilleries myself, even though they tend to not be the most amazing. Uh, that's something I've wanted to actually work on with regards in hyperspace. I wanted to make it to where you could use a separate weapon per power bar of the artillery. So instead of having it instead of having it scale on cooldown and making it like effectively useless, mm -hmm. you would have just like a weaker weapon. Now that's really interesting. So you'd have like say a laser at one power and it becomes a beam at two power, that sort of thing. Yeah, or just like a laser with like more shots the more power you okay. put into it, that sort of thing. That's yeah, very cool. No work has been done with that yet, but I, I've been trying to do things like that. I feel like probably as somebody who works on a mod, you have to be careful what you say because people will be like, oh, yes, <laughs> do it now, you know? Oh, trust me, I understand. Uh, <laughs> I threw all those kinds of things to Swift himself when I wasn't on the team. <laughs> well, interestingly, both players decided to not get uh, the heavy laser, so that means they're kind of banking on getting this hal halberd beam online, which is... To me, a little bit of a gamble because the great one of the great things about a heavy laser it's cheap and one and one uh, only one power in the uh, in the weapon system. So they're going to bank on getting an upgraded halberd beam, which is one of the best weapons in the game. Oh yes, the halberd is lovely. <laughs> as much as I love the glaive, the halberd is just like the perfect mix of stats and power efficiency. Yeah, most most people I know who have a weapon tier list that is, if not the top, one of the top weapons. It's at the top of my weapons list, that's for sure. And I agree. It's incredible. So have we got Swift Tiger back yet? I don't think we do. Uh, Kasalian, if you let me know when he's back, I will uh, 
he is back. Swift Tiger, you're back. You can hear me, sir? I'm not uh, hearing him if he's there. Hello? And there Hello. he is. Uh, <laughs> you're good to go. Welcome worry. back. <laughs> so we were just chatting about kind of, as a modder, if you ever say anything about any system, you're immediately going to be asked, okay, why isn't it in the game yet? Uh, is there... <laughs> What, what, what has been kind of the biggest challenge with hyperspace to kind of pull it together? Um, just like, there, there's so many things we want to do, like getting it organized and like working on one thing at a time. It, uh, it sometimes gets a bit overwhelming. Well, how long, how long have you been uh, kind of working on hyperspace, kind of unlocking the code in FTL? So me and Windows, uh, we started the project, I think like three years ago or something now. But I've been working on it like extensively for like the past year and a half or something. I, I hope I don't make you feel too old, but I, I've been into <laughs> I, I've been into FTL for like more than half my life. So, uh, well, you failed. I feel old, so you know. <laughs> okay, it makes me feel old too. <laughs> well, I kind of am kind of a boomer on 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 Twitch, honestly, being almost forty and still playing video games. But you know. If you're gonna be a kid, you know, being an old kid can be a good, a good thing, you know. <laughs> oh yes. So uh, Swift, with you uh, kind of working on hyperspace for so long, I I should probably ask about some of the cool features that it does. So like, you know, you talked about FTL unlocked is kind of how it started, um, but you know, what's kind of your background? How 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 did you get into you know creating a mod like this? How did you get started? Yeah. So. Um... It, it's it's funny that uh, Sally mentioned Binding of Isaac uh, early, on the earlier stream because mm -hmm. it's it, um, the anti-birth mod was actually like a big inspiration because I uh, me and Windows were uh, were testers for anti-birth. Oh, nice! And the lead developer, who's also the, like the lead developer for the for the new DLC, lended us like the code base. And it it wouldn't be it wouldn't be possible without the code base for FTL or for uh, for Binding of Isaac. Uh, so like the way the mod works, basically, like how it, okay. how it like, uh, adds code. I'll have to apologize. I am so completely ignorant of how programming works that you'll have to forgive me asking stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, Swift makes me feel like that all the time, considering how <laughs> great. At programming he is for his age <laughs> well that's no, that's a relief <laughs> i'm not the only ignorant one here <laughs> well billy what's your background it looked like you had like some computer science uh, degree or something like that that you have yeah i'm working on my computer science degree i'm like two-thirds of the way through it roughly uh going to full sail online so. awesome well let's see here i'm gonna just kind of look at the our players kind of position here again both very similar runs a burst laser 2 and a halberd beam that they haven't got online i will say billy's put one power into his halberd well into his weapons to potentially use the halberd beam um swift i asked billy this about you know how much does he like you know artilleries because so many of the people who send me ships for my stream to play just love to add crazy artilleries is there is there a system like artillery that you is your favorite to work with and manipulate Honestly, I'm I'm a fan of mind control. It's not it's not mm. like a it's not a very appealing system to most people, but I, I like how you can mess with um mess with enemy crew with it. Like most people just buy it so that you can cancel out the enemy mind control. But I like to use it in like more creative ways. I am right there with you. It's it's really cool to manipulate the AI where they move by mind controlling them and then hacking doors to kind of control where they go. I think that's a really cool thing you can do in FTL. Yeah, the combos with like the the different systems, they really add a, like a layer of depth to the game. Well, and Swift, I, I have a question here about the origin of your name. So where did where did Swift Tiger come about from? <laughs> so I don't know. Um, there's this there was this modder, like seven years ago now. His name was um, Dry Eagle. Some of you in chat may have, may have heard of him. I I basically just took his formula of like an adjective and an animal and just made the swift tiger. <laughs> so, well, yeah, mine's you... just a character from a book, so, you know, oh. probably better than mine. 
So what about, even my what name you, was, uh, was based on FTL. Oh, what was it actually based on FTL? Well, I mean, it was based off a modder that modded oh, okay. FTL, so. Well, Admiral Billy, I mean, we always salute each other when we greet each other in FTL land. Does is, is, is yours have anything to do with FTL with your name? Uh, completely unrelated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I played played Dota 2 for a few years, and I played Kunkka, who was an Admiral. Oh, okay. All right. Before I, that, I, I went think... by Mr. Billy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you got, you know, promoted to the Admiral position. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I'm a big I'm a big uh, League of Legends watcher, so I'm uh, uh, love I to watch to... that competitive scene. Yes, I dug in the league a little bit myself after that, but you know the, the MOBAs are quite a commitment. <laughs> you are not wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, Swift, do you have time to play games at all with all the time you spend working on modding, or is, <laughs> is it pretty much all work? I was actually like very much into League of Legends as well, but I quit. Oh, were like, you? <laughs> yeah, I quit like a month ago because it was too much of a time commitment. <laughs> well, to be competitive, you definitely have to put so much time into games yeah, like that. Yeah, definitely. All right, so Wildman Super Bob in an asteroid field. They both got the second shield. Uh, we're in about sec middle of sector two. This is a pretty even run. It's been interesting to see. Some people play really fast. Some people play really strategic and. Uh, Speed has been rewarded for some, but sometimes you get into some bad situations when you play super fast. Swift, how did you play FTL when you played it? Did you play fast or did you, were you a strategic player? I'd like to think I was more of a strategic player. I, I like watched a lot, of, um, a lot of content creators, so I knew what to do, but I just couldn't execute them. <laughs> FTL is definitely a punishing one if you don't execute it right, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, um, I also have a question about the the, the crew stat mo modifiers. There's apparently a mechanic that affects crew stat modifiers in hyperspace. Can you all talk about how that works? Uh, sure. So you already know from vanilla there were the like mantis pheromones and uh, the respirators, the, mm -hmm. basically just the things to you know modify a stat. In one case, it's how much damage they take from asphyxiation. The other, it's their movement speed. Mm -hmm. Basically, I, you know, one of these days I was looking through it and I was wondering if I could, like, extend that to all the other, like, stats in general. And we took a long time to do that. We had to, like, refactor what I was doing, like, ten times. But eventually we got it to where, you know, you could have augments, have other crew, have other things that just affect the stats of any other crew in, like, the same room or the same ship or the opposite ship or ah. whatever. Yeah. So it's almost like uh, a crew can have some sort of ability to to buff other crew in the room? Yeah, that's actually how multiverses orchids work right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. My personal example that I want to see that hasn't been implemented yet is like an augment to remove fire immunity from enemy crew. <laughs> to remove fire immunity. Oh. oh yeah. Burn the rocks. <laughs> Burn the rocks. That's really cool. <laughs> but yeah, things like that are completely possible now. So... That is super cool. All right. I feel like these guys have been living in hazards. We've been uh, solar have... flares and asteroid fields. Yeah. Um, it's hopefully, just a lot of hazards. Hopefully their rocks don't burn. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully for them, you haven't implemented it yet. Otherwise, they'd be in trouble. I see that for both of them, the poor artillery system is being neglected, as is usual. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a joke on my on my stream. When you play when you play the Fed, any of the Federation ships, you're basically gimped by one system because you're forced to have the useless artillery. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's it's good enough when you put a lot into it, but like until then, it's just kind of eh. Yeah, that's kind of the weakness of it. You have to invest so much into it to be useful that you often get behind in other in other things. Yeah, that's one reason I wanted to implement the artillery thing to try and make them a little more useful. Yes, it, I like your idea a lot, yeah. It is a very cool system, but it's gimped by being like effectively useless for half of its levels. Well, and I do like the flak one pickup. Um, again, as we say in my chat, if you want to win, just get a free flak. I think Billy paid for that one, but still, flak yeah. one burst laser two is really strong. Flak's in general, the MVP of FTL. <laughs> the most valuable, well, I wish it was flak, MVF, most valuable flak. Oh, uh, yeah, MVW. <laughs> there you go, most valuable weapon. I like it. <laughs> oh, okay. Free bur breach bomb from Billy. It's really nice. Holy crap. A weapon floating in space. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> uh, 
So Swift Tiger, with your development, have you ever gotten into the side of like actually ship development or um, you know weapon development, or you like to create the tools for other people to do that kind of stuff? Yeah, I'm, I I don't think I've really made that much content. Um, Hyperspace was actually meant to be like a massive content mod alongside like the uh, the tools for other modders, but I can like we can never like get artists to to make the content for us. So. It never came into fruition, unfortunately. But now we have Multiverse. So. That's true. You guys work really closely with Multiverse, right? To help develop that mod. Yeah. Uh, we have like a channel in there uh, in the server where we just we hang out most of the time. We've got our little hidey hole in the Multiverse Discord. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I have a feeling that if people type exclamation point guest list, they probably we probably have links to that. So. Uh... We, we're we're super psyched to have you 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 guys helping the event because I know Math Champ has worked a lot with the seating for for the tournament if, that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he yeah he's put a... Oops, sorry. Yeah, he's worked on like ironing out the bugs and stuff and like curating the um the mod for the event. And he's he's done a lot. Of, I can't take that much credit for it. But he's he's yeah. done a lot of work. Yeah, he has put a ton of effort into making sure it is a very stable version of it. I introduce new things, but I'm not exactly uh, <laughs> known for being right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Stability is not your strong suit, I guess, huh? <laughs> I mean, it's stable. It just doesn't work in the expected way, usually. <laughs> that sounds like what I would tell my mom when I got caught eating a cookie. I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> I meant to eat the broccoli, but it just was a cookie. It was an accident, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> Ooh, Billy Kirby. Those are some huge weapon pickups. That's a another flak one and a heavy laser. Yeah, he's he's almost living the dream. Just need one yeah. more burst two or flak. Yeah, he is he is stacked right now. I'm what's interesting about this tournament is we've seen a lot of people play really aggressive, kind of forego defense to get really strong offense because it helps your speed a lot. Yeah, I think that's just like generally a good FTL strategy. There are some situations where that'll burn you, but you know, usually if you defeat them, they don't hurt you. So yeah, it's true. Kind of a, the best defense is a good offense. You got to love that strat. Um, and for Swift, actually, we had a question about infinite ship, ship, uh, ship pages, because I think that was a kind of a thing for a lot of old mods where they couldn't ever get any extra ship slots. So is that something you kind of worked on to get all those extra ship slots and pages? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was probably like one of the first things I worked on. There's this, there's this cute story of like... Um, one of the other devs, uh, Windups, his cousin, his little cousin, like, uh, wanted to see, like, more content in FTL. And it basically started from that. Wow, so we can thank his little cousin for all the extra ships <laughs> that we have in Multiverse, right? <laughs> this this wouldn't be possible uh, without, without his little cousin. Yeah, it, makes, <laughs> it makes ship randomizers a lot more fun to use, too, because you can just generate, like, hundreds of ships at the same time and not have to reload it every single time. Yeah, honestly, that's a little terrifying. A true randomizer where there are literally hundreds of ships that you can choose from. <laughs> <laughs> it exists. so uh, That's really cool. I think that's one of the biggest things that probably stops some people to get into multiverse, some of those bigger mods, is there is so much content. And it can be a little intimidating. Have you all played much multiverse with all the, you know, kind of upgrades and changes they've used from you guys? Oh, yes. Multiverse is like my main mod I play nowadays. And it's definitely got a ton of content but the thing i like in particular is that it goes a long way to like not make unnecessary content the things that are there have a, the things that are there have a purpose it's not just like more of the same right a, an issue a lot of mods have in particular is with like missile weapons they mm -hmm. add a ton of new missiles because there's not a huge amount in normal ftl and then like every enemy you see has a missile uh, yeah and it's it ends up creating a big imbalance in the game. Yeah, well, you, you talk about imbalance. I think that's one of the hardest things with these large mods is when you add that much content, balance becomes really challenging. Do you guys ever help figure out balance stuff with, with Multiverse? Um, I have to an extent. I usually post my thoughts whenever like a new release comes out to you know, get a general idea of how things are. I'm not always right, but I'd like to think I have a decent idea of how good things are. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, you, when you have a lot of experience in playing and or modding, you kind of kind of know starts to know what works and what doesn't, right? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm, I'm kind of one-sided in that aspect because I do a lot of the modding but none of the playing, so yeah, I, I can't really give feedback on, on any of the balance. You're like, you create stuff, but I, I can't tell you if it's going to work. I just make it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Billy One Kirby really liking his weapons. Flak 1, Burst Laser 2, Heavy Laser 1. That's, that's some of the uh, OG OP weapons right there. Yep. Uh, Wild Man's not too bad off himself either. It could use a yeah. little more shield breaking, but... Yeah. He just needs to get some of those online. He's gone a different route. He's gone with the hacking route, which... Hacking is really strong. One thing I noticed you all have done in hyperspace, I don't know if this is in every version you've done, but you kind of made it so that bypassing defense drones with the hacking doesn't work. Is that something you kind of decided on early? Yeah, I think someone suggested it quite early on. Like, it was, um... It was still, like, nerf hacking a little bit, because... Yeah. Was... It's such an overpowered system. I mean, it it makes for like consistent gameplay, I guess. But like in some mode, you don't really want that. Um, you don't want, really want one system to to be the the one that everyone wants. Well, that's it's that's true. That's kind of how it is in vanilla. For yeah. everyone who's streaking, trying to get consistent wins, it's almost like if you don't get hacking, you have a much harder time getting a win. You know. <laughs> yeah. And like we do plan on introducing more like ways to actually be able to like change system specifications at some point, but those haven't come out either yet. System specification? How? What do you mean by that? Like if you just wanted to like rebalance something, you know, make oh, okay. the mind control last longer or the hack, you know, last ah. a little bit less long, that sort of thing. Oh, that's cool. I was actually working on a feature where you could control, like, manually control your um. Your mind controlled enemies and it, it, it turned out like to be pretty fun so that might that might be coming soon that's actually one of the biggest things that is the downside for mind control for me is for one you can't choose which uh enemy in a room you mind control that's random and you can't control that enemy that so that's a really cool feature if you're able to make that happen the feature also includes being able to use their abilities in the case of oh, mods yeah. like multiverse wow uh, okay how, how does that work when you take control of them? Does, does there like become a like a, a window for that character that pops up in your character, or is this something that's still being developed? Yeah, I haven't really made the UI for it yet, but uh, currently you just press like the power hotkey, and it and it does it. Yeah, it, there's probably okay. gonna be like some window for um for the crew member. That's really cool. All right. Well, Wildman did get the heavy laser online, which I'm very happy about because only a burst laser two can. Kind of feel a little weak sometimes. Yeah, but as, uh, good, as good as it is, it has its limitations. It does. It does. It's no flak one. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> more or less is a flak one. It pretty much is. The 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 uh, debate on my channel sometimes becomes which is better, flak one or burst laser two. And you know the real answer is well, it's situational. But for me, it's always the flak one. I just always love the flak one. Yeah, it's a close call. You trade the accuracy and the ability to get shot by basic defense drones for some cooldown mm -hmm. i mean flak is also just fun to use it's like a it's like oh, a yes. shotgun why would you not want a shotgun <laughs> who doesn't want a shotgun your enemies in the face right <laughs> everybody loves the like big flax even though they tend to not be as good yeah it's interesting i i like how billy kirby is not even taking the time to fix the breaches you yeah. know he's just got those pet breaches in those uh corner rooms over there I mean, it makes your airlocks faster. That's right. <laughs> Which could be a bad thing sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Uh, all right. Wildman Super Bob doing some really good crew micro, getting the forcing those enemies into the heel bay. Uh, we got Billy Kirby dealing with a little bit of borders. So one of my biggest challenges in FTL, uh, at vanilla anyway, is how kind of overpowered missiles seem to be. And uh, people always ask me on my stream, how do you balance missiles? And my, my only thought ever was that you just give enemies less. Is is that something you guys have ever talked about, like ways to balance things like that or changing uh, how much enemies can have? To an extent, uh, Multiverse introduced like a big balancing update recently. And in, in that were like big missile buffs. But the way multiverse counteracted that and i think the way that like it'll have to be counteracted in general is giving the enemies like specific special versions of those uh -huh. in multi in multiverse's case all of their uh, missiles cost like plus 1 power okay interesting so that's their downside that it gets more power for them to get them online yeah 
also one of the things multiverse had done were like uh split missiles into like heavy missiles and burst missiles the multiple shot missiles versus like the big you know heavy single missiles and gotcha. the heavy missiles get like hole busting uh, or like uh yeah the anti-hole mechanic double damage the, okay, system the double damage the system. yeah okay gotcha yeah but the enemies don't get that <laughs> oh okay interesting so, that's some cool mechanics i like that yeah you can separate the like weapons that enemies can get versus you so i think that's the kind of thing you have to do for that so basically what you're saying is is there's two versions of each weapon there's yours and the and the enemy's version of it i guess is how that works yeah, and a lot of the times they can use the same version. It's not a big deal, but for some of them, like the particularly power efficient weapons or like the ones like missiles where the enemies have a different problem than you do, uh, you can, you know, change them around as you see fit. Well, that's really cool. One of the coolest things about Multiverse that I've seen, uh, I haven't played it since they implemented this, was this idea of drones switching out or two versions of the drone at the beginning of battle you could choose if it's a boarding or an anti-personnel drone were you all involved with kind of coming up with that idea and implementing it um swift actually was to an extent the idea itself isn't that bad to try and implement in like regular ftl but there's a bug that prevents drones that you obtain at the same beacon from actually firing or something like that yeah, so, I had to I had to fix that bug so that it could actually be used, but I, I don't really have much of a say in um, in how it worked. Yeah, they were the ones who like came up with that idea themselves. We just, you know, introduced that bug fix that makes it actually work. That's really cool. It's, it's so cool to hear you guys work so close together with them. It's almost like you have the background team and the foreground team. You have two <laughs> different sides of it. It's cool. Yeah, and it's really nice to have some direction regarding like more desirable features. Also, Billy, when Kirby just got that uh, nine fuel for one drone part trait, it's hmm. a pretty good deal, especially when you're at one fuel. So, yeah, streamer luck, right? Streamer luck. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> perfect timing. <laughs> well, man has a choice of Mantis or Zoltan. He's going Zoltan. I've honestly found, I actually, I think he went, I'm sorry, he went Mantis, not Zoltan. I've found Zoltan sectors to be terrifying uh, because yeah. that boarding police, you know. Yeah, you've got that, and then just like Zoltan shields in general. <laughs> it mm -hmm. gives you more time to get hit by enemy weapons. Honestly, I swear when I go into Zoltan sectors, I end up finding more ma mantis in the Zoltan sectors. Like, oh, this is our <laughs> hunting grounds. We're just going to eat you in this sector. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Billy One Kirby is kind of floating low on health, so his defenses are not great. So I'm a little worried about that. His offense is amazing. He's already got all, what is that? Seven weapon power online in sector. I think this is four, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's a lovely setup. <laughs> you got nine shots to break shields and then you have a heavy laser. Well, Billy, do you want to talk a little bit about custom crew? Because uh, are you involved in like the creation of a lot of the custom crew and their abilities and that sort of thing? Um, I did a little bit with modifying them to make them work with like the stat modifiers we already talked about. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. of that was implemented by Swift. So Swift, did you, were you involved in the kind of the, a lot of the custom crew stuff? Yeah. So like the, the back end for the custom crew stuff, uh, that, I think that was like the second feature I worked on. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's what makes like a mod like multiverse, like a big mod, like mm -hmm. the, all the, all the custom crew types and stuff. Well, I know some of my. F oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's it's exciting when you have like um when you have like something you, uh, no one's ever seen before and want to show it off, and, you know, that's pro that's probably why I'm still working on hyperspace to this day. Well, yeah, the well custom. Was... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Billy. Go ahead. Oh <laughs> I'm no. So it's like... Yeah, I was just saying the custom crew are what really like drew my eyes to multiverse in the first place. Because for a while, it was only that you could use, like, the unused ghosts that were in the code. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now we have completely new crew. I just thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. One, one of the coolest things is, and one reason I was so excited that MathChamp joined your, your uh, dev team is he has created some really interesting, unique crew. Like, uh, uh, he, he took the art of a flak, made it small, and made a flak crew running around the ship. <laughs> and, and oh, no. So many it's, I know it's it's terrifying for the enemy, but I loved it because I got to just flack my enemies in the ship, as long <laughs> as well as the outside of the ship. So it's so cool what you can do with hyperspace and all these tools you guys are creating. Yeah, what would be nice at one point is to make it a little more easier 
for like the general person to mess with because at the moment you have to dig with like XML files. You gotta dig mm -hmm. through those and try and get what you want working. It's not too bad to do, but it does take a little bit of know-how. Uh, there's not really any tools like Superluminal, which yeah. I, I did modify to work with hyperspace to an extent. I need to oh, did update you? a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it would be nice to have some tools to make it more generally accessible. Yeah, that's true. It's I, I know the people who are creating those crew are people who I'm like, wow, you can actually read these crazy files that I don't even know what XML stands for. So, you know, <laughs> that's a skill I'm sure you got to learn. <laughs> if, if it makes yeah. you feel any better, I don't know what XML stands for. <laughs> I don't okay. either, so it's okay. That makes me feel a little better, actually. <laughs> XML stands for XML. Uh, okay, okay, XML. I'll, whatever XML stands for, it's it's not important. I just play the games. I don't have to actually program <laughs> the games. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's all drilled. All right, Billy Kirby, again, his weapon system is super strong. I'm kind of thinking uh, he might not need to get hacking. You know, we talked about how important hacking is, but uh, it'll be curious if he chooses cloaking or hacking. Those are kind of the two OP systems that are usually the, the main choice for kind yeah. of vanilla consistent players. Yeah, when you've got like nine shots plus a heavy laser, uh, you mm -hmm. don't really need to hack shields as much or hack the weapons when you can just destroy them first, that sort of thing. Although yes. hacking the piloting or the engines could be handy. Yeah, super handy. Uh, that's what uh, I think uh, Crow did last time. He was using low level hacking to just guarantee he gets through, which again is one of, one of the people in my stream, what, what they talk about some of the systems, systems that add what do they call it? Uh, consistency to such a random game. Cloaking gives you guaranteed dodge. Hacking gives you guaranteed shields down. It's interesting how those kind of systems can be so powerful in a game like FTL is so randomly, you yeah. know, dependent. You can use mind control for a bit of consistency too. That's actually what Billy One Kirby just did. Mind control yeah. the pilot. Mm hmm Yeah, kind of lower the dodge. It's a very, very, very nice little bonus thing. It's, it's interesting that he chose to get mind control instead of trying to save for the hacking and the cloaking, kind of the holy duality, maybe you could call it. <laughs> yeah. But I he's think, making good use of it, so. I think when I first saw hacking, though, I thought, like, you know, it could have, like, cooler effects. Like, if you hacked, um, if you hack, like, doors, you could, like, open their own airlocks and, like, vent their own crew and stuff. But, like, it's only used for, like, shields, engines, sometimes mm -hmm. O2. Yeah, I've, I've heard people talking about that. Is that is that something that with hyperspace you're able to change things like being able to control, you know, the way the heal bay works if you hack it other than just making it hurt them or control the doors like you said? I mean, we can change it and it's like, it's on our radar, but yeah, we, haven't, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> in theory, theoretically, anything's <laughs> possible, right? <laughs> yeah. That's basically what hyperspace lets us do. Like, <laughs> we can theoretically change just about anything. The amount of work that goes into it can vary a lot. Sure. But, yeah. Well, so how much time are, are are you both like full time working on this, or is this like kind of a side thing you do and have you know real jobs like other people would say? <laughs> or how, how much time do you guys uh, devote to working on hyperspace? Well, I'm I'm still in school, so I have a I have quite a bit of free time to work on it. Yeah. What are you going here. to school for? Swift. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Billy. I'm I'm 17. I'm I'm doing like my A levels. I don't know I don't know what the equivalent in um in the US is, but uh, I'm doing computer science, physics, and maths. So. Wow, that yeah, really does make me feel old that you're able to do all this and you're only 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, now you know how I feel. I, I do, Billy, I do. <laughs> I'm going to college for computer science, and he has a better understanding of a lot of it than I do. <laughs> mm. All right, sorry, I'm just updating a command here. Were you saying something earlier, Billy, about uh, how long you've been... Uh... Oh, yeah, right. Uh, it was just the same sort of thing as him. I'm still in school. I do it on the side. Usually, like, an hour or two every day, something like that. It depends. Is this a fun project for you guys, or is this like, oh, I gotta go work and fix this thing for the multiverse guys? <laughs> it varies, but I, I usually have fun. Like a lot of the things I work on are because I really want to see them. Yeah, if if I didn't have fun, I don't think I'd still be working on it. To be <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a really good answer. <laughs> yeah, like another thing I forgot to mention earlier, I added little like numbers above the weapons so you could see the cooldowns as like a number and like how oh. they're affected by reloaders and things like that. 
That was is another it like thing a number I... in seconds or? Yeah, so like above the flak one, you would see a like 7.5 out of 10 or whatever. Okay. Because the little bars to the sides of weapons can be a little misleading if you have like a low and a high cooldown weapon beside each other, among other yeah, things. Yeah, that's true. If you have a glaive beam and an ion blast, it's you got a yes. really <laughs> tiny bar and a really long bar. <laughs> yes, and then like when you get reloaders and things, it just kind of changes the height. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was a neat feature, so I added things like that. Yeah, Billy's been working on a lot of the um, quality of life stuff that uh, is in like um, the new versions of multiverse and stuff. Like um, so the the weapon descriptions are like way way better organized now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotta say, Billy Kirby got three. Uh, is that the third flak one he's got? That is, did he? I think I saw a sold burst for that. <laughs> yeah, he sold a burst. You know what? A man after my own heart. Selling a burst laser <laughs> two to get a flak. Heavy laser uh, over the burst laser. Uh, those those are both really really strong. I, you know, the flakening, getting those four flak ones is is kind of my my yeah. favorite weapon system. It is a very powerful weapon setup, and it helps that it's fun to use. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like one shotgun? How about four shotguns? Oh yes. <laughs> you got the guy in uh, Star Wars got the lightsaber arms. Let's add some shotgun arms to these guys. <laughs> Which isn't there a League of Legends guy with shotgun arms? Isn't that the uh, uh, that one guy? Urgot? I think Urgot has sh uh, shotgun legs. Oh, yeah, yeah, shotgun knees, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah shotgun <laughs> knees. <laughs> that needs to be a race in FTL. A guy that runs around with shotguns on his knees just blasting everyone isn't that basically what math trump's flak race is <laughs> it's, that's true his, that is kind of what his flak race did <laughs> yeah sounds good to me all right wild man super bob a little low on health uh I i'll be honest a lot of these players live on low health and with uh really high offense and no defense and i it makes me a little nervous honestly it's a little spooky but you know you come across stores frequently enough can stay on low health for a little while longer, right? Have you played FTL? Oh my god, it's that's when you can't find a store, right? <laughs> I mean, usually, but eh, just gotta be optimistic about it and it'll come to you, probably. You, you have a much more optimistic view of, of FTL than me. <laughs> I've been burned occasionally, frequently. Uh, all right, uh, so sector five for Wildman Super Bob. Um, I'm not sure which sector Billy is in. I think he's been staying, I think a little bit ahead of Wildman Super Bob. So let's take a look at his sector so we can get kind of an idea who's who's kind of leading right here because they have pretty similar builds. Although I really like Billy's high power weapons. I didn't get to see it. I guess we will in a second. Yeah, let's see what Billy's. Uh, okay, he's gonna go with a, a sensor upgrade. Now that's an interesting mm -hmm. choice. Sector six. Okay, yeah, about a sector ahead right now. Mm -mm. Sensors, huh? Uh, you know what? I bet it's to use his mind control offensively. That's uh, not what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, right. That would work. I, I had this discussion with uh, uh, Freddy a lot where he's like, no, it's always hacking. I'm like, you sure you don't want mind control? Because I really <laughs> like it, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is a lot of fun to use. I mentioned I really like artilleries earlier, but mind control's up there too. <laughs> You like to use artillery, you just have to wait a minute every time you want to use it. Right? <laughs> yep. All right, so Billy Kirby, I think, is definitely ahead here. Uh, what we found a lot is when the players are playing faster, the ones who play slower, they kind of need to really maximize their diving, their kind of ship and, and scrap gain. So we'll have to see if Wildman Super Bob can keep up with farming these sectors, you know? Yeah, it seems like the, the, the score payoff is... That's pretty good, though. It yeah, is. They seem to they seem to win most of the time. It's been really interesting to see how you know, because when, when we created this rule system, it was we were trying to find how do we balance score farming versus speed running because we don't want either one to be the only strategy you can use. And so it's been interesting to see different players kind of go with the different strategies and still be competitive with both sides of it. Yeah, I have noticed yeah, that there's a lot of variety in what works. And it's it's so cool seeing like the um, the different loadouts that people have when they get to the flagship with the same seed. Yeah, it's very true. One one thing that I'm really excited about that that Kassalian had mentioned is we're hoping of like if we can do future tournaments and future things that hyperspace can implement things like challenge runs and 
fun weapon functionality, hazards, mutators that affect, uh, you know, different runs? Is this is something on your guys' radar? Yeah, we'd definitely be down to to work on to work with Cassilian on like future to uh, tournaments and stuff. I think it'd be really fun. Yeah, ideally we'd be able to do something again tying back into the Binding of Isaac, similar to the way their challenge runs and things work. It's different starting conditions, different uh, mm -hmm. conditions in like different areas, yada yada. Yeah, I know Math Champ has talked about. It'd be cool if you we could create a scenario like this is on fire. You only have this much crew. <laughs> And your O2 is out, you know, create a scenario where you have to kind of figure it out. I like that idea a lot. <laughs> FTL puzzles, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That would I, be I know that uh, Hearthstone kind of does a similar thing where they'll have, you know, this is this is the board set up for this, for this turn, and you have to figure out a way to get lethal this turn or else you'll lose. You know, it's, it's a cool yeah. idea to implement in FTL. Yeah, I always like those. They're, they're fun little mental exercises every once in a while. And also a break from FTL's trolliness, hopefully, every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, ideally a challenge like that's consistent. So uh, that's you true. get trolled if you know what you're doing. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but Math Champ certainly finds a way to troll me. I know that. Yep. He might have <laughs> more ways to troll you sometime soon. <laughs> oh, look at Billy Kirby. That is the Ooh. He has the flackening. Oh, oh, boy. Here it is. <laughs> he immediately got it online. <laughs> oh, boy. This is officially my favorite run of the tournament so far. <laughs> the only thing that would make this better is if we were on Fed B that had the flak artillery, <laughs> and then you'd go full flackening. <laughs> the true flackening. The true flackening. <laughs> I don't think the fleet stands a chance. <laughs> uh, I love how happy Billy Kirby's face was when yeah. he got there. <laughs> something, I love, something I love with the flackening is how dark the circle gets. <laughs> the target <targeting. laughs> all that red stacking on top of each other yeah it's just it blots out the room <laughs> so you know there's about to be some pain coming uh, again four shotguns are better than one. Oh yes uh Kassalian in chat says billy just won the meme award for the tournament <laughs> but hollow passed on the double glade pre-igniter that he almost had yeah, <laughs> yeah i was yeah. i was very i was very sad <laughs> I think he should have gone for it. His ability to resist <laughs> meme strats that are like good, but maybe not as good as the ideal is uh, it's astounding. Hollow having 92 wins in a row on hard mode no pause has probably made him immune to many memes that chat tries to convince him <laughs> of. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I could do it. The memes are just so fun. <laughs> the memes are strong with this one. <laughs> <laughs> So we, uh, Freddie's been asking this a lot of our guests. We have to ask both of you. So Swift and Admiral, one at a time, are you a Star Trek or a Star Wars person? Uh, Swift, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> this this might be a controversial take, but I haven't I haven't ever watched either of them. <gasps> oh <laughs> no! <laughs> like I'm too busy making mods to watch movies. Exactly. <laughs> I have hyperspace to work on. Yeah. <laughs> but I... What about you, Billy? I never really watched a whole lot of Star Trek. I watched Star Wars like way back in the past, but it's been ages, so I don't really have a strong opinion on either yet. Oh and man, kind of boring. It's not boring. It's it's you're gonna get trolled by Twitch chat. Like, you have to oh, do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm not ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I see Casalian just uh, showed me the final uh, for the final run our our our, our kind of survey here. So. I'm going to have to agree with this. Billy Kirby is at 73% to win. Wildman Super Bob is tied with FTL at 13% chance to win. <laughs> You'd think FTL would be higher. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm waiting for the, uh, this, the, uh, the poll to have FTL on top at some point. <laughs> we have seen a lot of the, uh, the baby flagship, haven't we? We have. This is at least the third or fourth time today. Well, and you know what? I have to throw my vote for Billy Kirby because just flackening. Just flackening. The flackening is not only a meme, but it's really good. It is. Well, one thing I love about flackening is not only, like you say, is it a meme, but if you play things like hard mode no pause where you don't have time to aim halberd beams or glaive beams between your hacks and your other micro, you just aim flax at shields and sit back and watch the death. <laughs> and it helps when all the weapons are on exactly the same timer. Exactly. And there you go. 
All right. Well, Billy Kirby, I believe, is ahead both in offense and in... Yeah, he's in Sector 7. He's declining really strong. Declining poor sensors level 3. The the best upgrade. The best the best upgrade to never spend your scrap on. <laughs> I love it, but like I, I just never want to buy it, of course, because it's just not worth that much. Well, and that's one thing you... Didn't you change that in hyperspace where... Or is it multiverse where the level 3 sensors actually does show the charge time on the uh, boss's artilleries? Um... I thought that yeah. was a vanilla thing, but maybe it, not. It shows the um, it shows the charges in vanilla, but it doesn't show like the uh, the power distribution. Ah, uh, okay. I think we ch yeah we changed that for hyperspace. I don't know why they didn't in vanilla like. I can tell you exactly sense. why, because if you had level three sensors and could see that these artilleries were like changing every because uh, like every phase, I think they're at different levels. I think phase one missiles, I think has three or four, and then phase two, it's different. So I don't think they wanted the player to no. see that basically they're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Flagship kind of cheats in general. It shuffles its systems it, it, around every phase. It definitely <laughs> does. It definitely does. But they didn't want it to be obvious. You know, you have to work to find out that uh, they're cheating, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, another Ashford Field, Billy One Kirby. Man, that, that four flak, he's just, he just sailing. He just wants to get as much scrap now so he can... Uh, kind of pad his score here he is completely boss ready i'm still curious if he's going to try to get cloaking or hacking for his final system we'll just go for the artillery come on <laughs> <laughs> the other bad thing even a fully upgraded artillery what is what is the charge time it's like uh, 20 12 or... it should be uh, yeah I, I think 20 i think you're right even that is after that's after two volleys of flak ones. So you, you have done yep. so much damage that it's like, oh, by the way, I'm still here, uh, Artillery says. It is a very long cooldown. Although, fun fact, if you have reloaders, those affect the artillery. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is something I didn't learn until fairly recently, that uh, it doesn't get affected by a pre-igniter, but it does get affected by, art uh, by uh, automated reloader. It's pretty nifty. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Chad is going crazy for the flackening that just happened five minutes ago. So <laughs> I do, in fact, notice it. <laughs> uh, I think everybody has, has agreed. Even if Billy doesn't win, he kind of wins the meme award. <laughs> the meme award counts <laughs> for something. <laughs> we need to have trophies for, for this. And uh, the meme award would just be, I don't know, a flack or a doge or something. It's got to be a picture of, like, a missile to the weapons or something. <laughs> a big meme. Yes. <sighs> Wild Man Super Bob. I feel like he's been less than 10 health, like, half of this run. Yeah, same here. I mean, he's he's alive. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Freddy says it's, you know, seven more than he needs, I guess, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. We have so focused on Billy. I do want to kind of take a look at what Wildman's weapon setup. He has Halberd. He has Burst Laser Two. He has Heavy Laser One. This, this is it's no flackening, but you gotta say. <laughs> I mean, it's still strong. It's solid. It, it, it's still super strong, especially that Halberd beam. Halberds are Halberds. They are great to have. It's carried him through a lot of the run, to be honest. And for Swift, for, for a lot of the like features you've added for hyperspace, what's been the inspiration? Has it always been multiverse, or have you had kind of your own things that you'd like to add and work on? Yeah, I mean, obviously I have um, things that I want to work on, but multiverse like gives us like some... So multiverse wants to add something, and they just like hand it over to us to make the back end, and then they work on, they work on like the content, and it, it's... It's a pretty smooth system. Do you know uh, many of the multiverse people like in real life, or do you like chat with them a lot? Are they like becoming your friends online? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know any of them in person, but yeah, online I chat with them quite a bit. That's that's really cool that you guys have that partnership. That's, I I know that the FTL players uh, are excited about it because it's it's added so much cool stuff to the community and to the modding community, especially. Yeah. It's it's really cool seeing what people make with your with what you've made. I definitely caused some headaches for poor kicks, but uh, the end result <laughs> is great. <laughs> some headaches, you say, from uh, from them work with them. 
you know, some of the features that are less than polished or some mm -hmm. of the things that he forgot that I didn't remind him of or, you know, things like that. There is this feature that I've been I've been working on. Um, I think MathChamp ran... Um, I think MathChamp has made a viewership for it. Uh, which... Do you know which... Uh... Uh, which feature you're talking about? Well, I, I don't. I don't really want to say it right now, but oh, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. special, maybe. Oh, okay. Well, I was given a teaser from Kasayan about something new that might be happening. I don't know what I'm allowed to say either. So, <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, we'll just have to see. Okay. Oh man, you're you're gonna you're gonna make Chat go crazy. What new feature? What is it? Is it a weapon? Is it a crew? Is it a system? What is it? It is very likely going to have a crazy response, considering that it has been wanted for ages. Do you know when you're going to release this and tell us about it? Because I'm I'm dying to know, too. We were planning on letting you stream it as a part of a viewership whenever the next oh. uh, viewership encounter is. Oh. oh, oh, I cannot wait. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, all of that is ready to go whenever that is. OK, well, Matt Champ hasn't told me he must be. Uh... <laughs> He must be waiting to troll me or, uh, you know, surprise me at some point. I don't know, because MathChamp has made some of my favorite ships, honestly. He, he had a whole series of ships that were based off of oxygen not included rockets mm -hmm. that all had really interesting visuals and little gimmicks with them. So, <laughs> yeah, th this one's kind of a, a compilation from a lot of people. <laughs> OK. Oh, that is so cool. I feel so special <laughs> that you're telling me about this. I think I think everyone in chat will uh, will see in time. <laughs> you, you guys are becoming true devs when you're saying oh it's gonna be something but you don't get to see it soon tm just wait <laughs> there will be a time and a place <laughs> well that's awesome i am i'm really psyched thank you for teasing me and also curse you for teasing me because now i won't be able to wait to see what it is oh, yes. i have at least play tested the thing it is a viable ship don't worry okay good <laughs> My my chat will appreciate that with all the uh, untested ships we've checked out on on, on stream. <laughs> Probably a bit on the strong side, but that's okay. Oh, that's I would have it no other way. <laughs> when do you think you'll do your um, next viewership stream, by the way? Uh, it'll probably be a week from this Monday. After this weekend, I'm going to be probably pretty toasted, to, so I'll probably take this Monday off. So probably a week from this Monday would be the next viewership stream. Sounds good okay, to me. Sure. Awesome. Well, speaking of overpowered ship, this Billy One Kirby's. <laughs> oh, his flackening looks so good. He is diving right now, so and he's a little low on health. Yeah, but it, it's fine. Just dodge the ASB shots. <laughs> you say it's fine way too much, Brettiel. It's fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> All right. Well, even, he did get to the free repair, so he is looking rather fine, I would say. Even when it's not fine, it's fine. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> keep your hopes up, maybe. <laughs> Maybe, unless you're dead. Oh, oh, you're dead. Oh, well, you can still look forward to the next life, you know? Yeah, I mean, when the ship is gone, there's probably no more hopes. But I mean, <laughs> you know, up until that point, there's is almost your, always is, a chance. Is, is your favorite song, what is it from Life of Brian, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life? Just... <laughs> it is a good song. <laughs> Unwavering <laughs> optimism in the face of death. I mean, you can be toxically op optimistic, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever heard that term before. <laughs> it is a thing. Toxically optimistic. <laughs> Sometimes things are not all right. <laughs> Swift, how is it working with somebody who's toxically optimistic, by the way? <laughs> oh, these toxically optimistic people, man. <laughs> Driving you crazy, right? Yeah. I do, in fact, sometimes try to do things that are a bit over my head, and then Swift has come to my rescue. But... <laughs> Adding some realism to your life? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like, I know you want to have this, but uh, let me tell you, this is real life. <laughs> Adding some much-needed pessimism. <laughs> <laughs> it that's is needed I... sometimes. Yeah, that's what I add to my chat. Uh, all the salt and rage uh, is, is to... You know, cast doubt on these people who, oh, you can win any run. Like, I'll show you. <laughs> mm. uh, I, I'd, I'd say that the majority of runs are winnable, but some are just not going to work out. It, it just happens. Yeah, it's interesting to hear some of these players who are like, I see their run and like, that's the highest score I've ever seen. And they go, 
oh man i could have done so much better that was a terrible seed i i didn't play that well i'm like well if that's you playing badly what is what is you playing well that's what i want to know <laughs> oh yes yeah i think hindsight makes you makes you look a lot worse than you are yeah i've never gone for like particularly high scores myself i just kind of try and survive yeah that's usually what you do in ftl uh, Billy One Kirby did just take. I think he. I think he did not take that shield charge booster because taking deals. What, what's interesting uh, also about this is you get to learn a lot of the details of how how your score is qual uh, uh, calculated. So if you take a surrender, I believe that does not count as a ship fight, and I don't think the scrap rewards count towards your score either. Oh, that's interesting. Do you all uh, interact much with like the the? background of how like score is calculated is that stuff that you can like manipulate and change with your mod we definitely could yeah and we like, might for like some some tournaments in the future yeah i'm not exactly sure how much work will go into it yet but i can't imagine it being that bad <laughs> there's that uh, optimism coming again <laughs> yeah i mean it's just a just a calculation it can't be that bad right <laughs> uh well, I will say it will be cool if we get if this is if this tournament, which I'm really hoping is something that we can do regularly. It'd be really cool to get you know uh, a specific mod pack that allows the you know kind of the the score to be calculated, so we don't have to do the outside calculations. It's it's so cool having having people with your skills as a part of the team of making this thing happen. That is so cool. Yes, and I think that is something that can realistically be done. But yeah, we'd have to look into it just to see. All right, so uh, Wildman coming towards the end of Sector 7. So he's about a sector, maybe three-quarters of a sector behind. Yeah, uh, cause... It makes sense. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, when you don't have the flattening, you know, you go a little <laughs> bit slower. That's true. Billy Kirby actually let somebody run away with the flattening? Oh. oh, the humanity. How dare you? Uh, Kasalian says he's got an idea fresh from chat. Have an event where players build a ship and face off. Like X amount of scrap and build a ship, then have head to heads with a best of three. Each player's ship is being played, and one backup ship for game threes. Interesting. Yeah. Wait, so is this like, would you have like a set amount of scrap and then you don't gain scrap any, any more in the run? I think so. I, I think it's like you almost have like a bank of scrap. You can spend this on building a ship from that bank, and then we have the, each player. Do that and then have them go to head to head and see who has a better uh oh wait he's saying you do gain scrap for a regular run i don't know interesting idea to build a ship from scrap yeah it's an interesting idea it's kind of what i did for one of my uh multiverse add-ons i was working on <laughs> I, what did that one do it more or less adds a whole bunch of ships that have nothing but like the bare essentials that a ship needs to work you know you have a single crew you have piloting, you have engines, you have the weapon system. That's it. And then okay. you have a lump sum of scrap that you then spend to, you know, purchase a variety of equipment and systems and junk before you start the run. Kind of build your own ship kind of idea, huh? Yeah, by default, it's about a thousand scrap because that's what a lot of like the vanilla ships are effectively worth if you were to just buy them outright. Oh, interesting. Some are a little more, some are a little less, but yeah. Which one's the... Yeah, that does sound like a very similar thing. Which one's the most I want? Um, which one has the most scrap value? I forget. There's, like, Steam guides and things like that of the scrap value of ships. I can look that up, actually. Okay. Well, I know that... Uh, I've actually looked at a couple of these things. Mantis B actually has level 2 shields and, like, a boarding drone and a defense drone. I feel like Mantis B actually might be kind of high up on that list with how much it starts with, even though it has no weapon. It is. Apparently, NGC is the most at 11.25. Yeah. Wow, okay. And Mantis B is at 11.10. Okay. Interesting. That's a really cool idea. I, I like that a lot. Build your own ship and then see how it performs. Yes. We're... Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. I just wanted to make a note. Oh. Billy Kirby has a flackening, but he also got level 3 sensors, or as we call them, swag sensors. Ooh. <laughs> They are completely swag since, you know, they are turned off in, in vanilla. They're actually turned off. They actually manually hack the level three so you don't see, like we were talking about earlier. You should man it. <laughs> you should man it so that we can see the, we can see the new hyperspace feature. Gotta have level four. 
<laughs> yeah, level four yeah. sensors. What would that even show you? Uh, that's how they already work. Uh, the level four sensors gives you uh, the power bars at the bottom. Ah, okay. Yeah, oh, see, you there did it. You did it. <laughs> All right. 102, right at 31, I think, for Billy Kirby. So 103. Okay, we're going with 103 there. And <laughs> Billy Kirby with the flacketing, you gotta love it. That's that's by far my favorite run so far. Oh, yes. Oh, hello, there's a double halberd going on over there. Oh, okay. It's not a flackening meme, but that's a, that's a bit of a, that could be a one shot. What's his two power weapon? Yeah, it's got the burst two. Burst two, okay. I don't think that's quite a one shot with the burst two. I think he would need either a pike beam or maybe hole beam would allow for a one shot. But uh, he is, I think, finally heading to Sector 8. So, yeah, he's about a sector behind Wildman Super Bob. So he needs to hope that we, he has gotten a lot more scrap than Billy Kerr because that was a pretty impressive uh, run for Billy. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the full flex. And Super yeah. Bob over here has got a pretty decent run himself. It's not he quite does. the flat thing, but, you know, it's working yeah, I feel, out. I feel like Billy's stolen some of the thunder here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I... Uh, you you get full flackening so infrequently that it just feels so good when you actually make it happen. Yeah, you gotta make note of it. Um, I, Wildman never did get backup battery, and he didn't get his other system either, so... <laughs> honestly, I feel like he's a little bit behind in scrap, because without that last system, that that's like... if Say if he'd gotten cloaking, you would have known that was another 150 scrap that he had spent on his ship. Yeah, it's very possible. I guess we'll find out here soon. All right, four shields. Pretty pretty annoying ship to deal with. All right, there's the 5991. I think we're going to hide the score when Wildman Super Bob finishes so that people can't calculate it so mm. that we can leave them in suspense. Same suspense as last time, huh? Yes, you got to build the suspense, <laughs> you know. Hey, the suspense is good. Uh, oh, is there, any, is there anything in hyperspace that I haven't asked or talked to you about that you guys would like to share? Because I... I, your, your mod is so cool and it's making so much possible that I want to make sure that you guys definitely let us know what you're allowed to tell us with, apart mm. from teasing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Swift, do you have any? Yeah, to be honest, I think the, the main feature that I'm working on that is that secret one. That, so, that you're just yeah, going to have to keep teasing us with. Yeah. <laughs> it is very secret. Normal, very worthwhile secret, though. So... Just so I understand, I'm going to get to experience this on a viewership. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All you right. will be the first person to experience this feature. Oh, uh, that is so cool. I, <laughs> I've already... I have already... Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from us. Yes. I have already stolen the title of the first victory with the, the new thing, so... All right. All right. So I know who to be jealous of. I need to be jealous of Billy right now because he's experienced it. <laughs> Uh, one thing I will say about Wildman Super Bob is he has four crew and no mind control. So phase three of the boss, yeah. uh, that's a little scary, honestly. Yeah, hasn't really picked up any crew throughout the run, has he? Mm -mm. And I, what what for you all is the hardest part? I know you, uh, Swift, you say you haven't played a ton of vanilla FTL, but is there like a, a certain mechanic that's the hardest to deal with? Like is anti-boarding, dealing with, you know, hacking or boarding drones? What, what do you find hard to deal with specifically against the boss? Yeah, I feel like if you if you get a bad hack, your run can go from like really good to really bad in just a second. Yeah, for me, yeah, at least hacking, in general, bad. weapon hacks that? are just weapon incredibly hacks? frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's fine to use against the enemy because you're the one in power, but uh, when, <laughs> when you're the one getting hacked, you know, you lose like 10 seconds of weapon charge on top of not charging for 10 mm -hmm. seconds. That's ooh, That's terrible, especially if you have any kind of long cooldown weapon. We're just reinforcing the uh, fact that I guess hacking needed to be nerfed, as sad as it is for me to admit. <laughs> it is it is a very strong system, although I think it's only a couple parts of it that are incredibly strong. Like, shield I... hacks, uh, weapon hacks, and to an extent, the, like, engine hacks, but you can, you know, you can emulate that with other effects. It's fine. Have you ever had requests to change hack more than you have, just apart from whatever changes you've made? Um, 
like because well, because you all made the change of the drone blowing up when uh when you depower it right uh swift yeah. oh swift that swift made that yes yeah that was before i was ever on the team he said it was like one of the first few things he did also oh hey billy one kirby's got it I, I noticed his weapon getting lit on fire and that kind of spooked me but he's got it uh well I, I, swift are you still with us Oh, we might have lost him there. Okay. Oh, whoops. Uh, I, was, I was looking at the uh, other stream. Billy Wind Kirby's been them for a while now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Billy got the win. He's looking really strong with that Ooh. flackening. I've got and like, he's won. <laughs> I've got a ton of monitors open in front of me. Got the old stream and <laughs> this stream and the other stream. Ugh. Oh, I don't blame you. I told you my brain was going to be fried. Uh, <laughs> I got I got three screens with chat, Discord, and a game. Sometimes I'm not sure which one is, is the current game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens. I'll just keep an eye on Super Bob instead. Yeah, Super Bob is still about, uh, let's see, he's currently about five minutes behind. He's coming up on the boss fight, so he's going to need a pretty big scrap advantage to have, you know, a chance to compete with Billy Kirby. Oh, <laughs> he's got the vented picture <laughs> on Billy One Kirby's side. <laughs> uh I gotta say, one of the best parts about being on Twitch is getting art from, you know, viewers like this. This is this is me being vented as a human on, FT on an FTL ship. Yeah, the poor humans. <laughs> oh yeah, did you like the um, the sound that plays when you dismiss a crew? <laughs> yes, yes. The first time I played with hyperspace, uh, it might have been Math Champ or some, somebody else said, by the way, when you dismiss a crew, listen to the sound. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's That might be my favorite part of hyperspace, honestly. That is a feature that is surprisingly controversial to some people. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> they do not like it. Why? Do they it, think it's too mean or what? I, I think so. I, I believe that is the implication. <laughs> They just haven't vented enough humans yet, you know? <laughs> it becomes habit after a while. You don't even think about it. It's like, oh, human, oh, vent. Oh, oh, I actually needed that crew. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have vented that human. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we make the joke on my stream that if you have bad RNG, it's because you haven't vented enough humans because you must sacrifice them to the RNG gods. Ooh. I could where's the sacrifice? <laughs> All right, Wildman Super Bob, looking if he's got any enough scrap for one last upgrade, because I think he's got the boss fight here. He's at about a seven health, uh, what's the word, disadvantage here, maybe for uh, for the boss fight, and only four crew. So it might be a little touch and go if he even gets this win. Yeah, could be a little spooky, especially depending on where the hat goes. Yeah, for for sure, that that could be a big deal. What's your what's your least favorite hack? Is it always the weapon hack? It's always the weapons hack. <laughs> Pilot he's pretty bad. Didn't didn't Fob have a close call with the weapon hack earlier? He did. Yes. He had a glaive beam, which is already super slow. Yeah. He had a weapon hack on it, and the cloaking kind of desynced with the hacking, so he was <laughs> he had a rough fight earlier. The weapon hack is just a huge <laughs> a turn. Mm -hmm. A huge I swing will... in the enemy's favor. I will often, um, if I get weapon hacked, just immediately run away, not even try the fight, because I'm I, I know how much of a disadvantage that puts me at from the beginning. Yeah, I mean hacks in general, they do a lot more than just the active effect too. It's maybe something you don't notice until you look into it, but a you can't man the system mm -hmm. while it's being hacked, and also you repair it half speed. Do you? I did not know that you repair hack systems at half speed. Mm -hmm. Is that so, yeah. is that always been in since vanilla? As far as I know. So yeah, if your I weapons get you. hacked, and especially if they get shot while hacked, it is disastrous. I I don't know if chat knows this, but my mind was just blown. I had no idea that uh, hack systems repair at half speed. Yep. I need to talk hack to you, you devs <laughs> and modders more often. Yeah, that contributes to the power. Even if it didn't have the like half repair speed in the manning lock, it would still be a powerful system. But Ooh. Okay. I have I have learned I, I I promise you I have like over four thousand hours in FTL and there, I still learn everything almost every time I play or talk to somebody about the game it's so amazing to me about this game. I understand. Don't worry. I learn things all the time. Another thing you might not know is that the uh, the reloaders don't stack in the way you think they would. Really? How how do they stack? When they say that like the cooldown is reduced, it's actually the charge speed increasing. So like if you have a hundred percent quote unquote cooldown reduction, 
it's actually uh, half cooldown. So it's not twice as fast. It's it, it is twice as fast. Yeah, it's, it's twice as fast. Okay. Yeah, it's a very weird thing that I don't believe is clear. Well, and I'll be honest. Even off stream, my math is not bad. So trying to do stream <laughs> on the math on stream. That's why I have Math Champ around. He's always telling me, "Okay, this is yeah. how it works." <laughs> yeah, it usually doesn't change too much, but when you want to like stack a bunch of reloaders, it isn't very good to do that. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't give you a big effect. It doesn't give as much of a bonus as you think it would, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, Wildman Super Bob taking that three damage missile. I mean, oh, yeah. it hit artillery, so it's not that big a deal, but. Uh, just, just the painful extra damage. <laughs> All right, I, I love his name, Fuel. Please, Fuel has not been his issue this run. I will say it's whole currently. Mm. All right, let's see if he can get one final upgrade here. It's going to be max piloting. That's an interesting one. Yeah, it's I nice honestly, to have the buffer. It, it is. I honestly was thinking about power, but maybe he's planning to move power between shields and engines. Mm. Maybe. It's an interesting thing with some of these really skilled uh, hard mode no pause players that, that is the most impressive to me is how quickly they use their hotkeys to move power around their ship at perfect timing. It's really cool to see like Hollow do. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Do you ever do like those strats where they make the um, like the enemy AI targeting, like target your uh, worst systems so that they don't target like weapons and stuff? Yes, that's that's a that's a pretty common strategy for stealth B hard mode no pause streakers, because one of the big killers on stealth B is your weapon going offline before you can charge it for your first shot. So uh, I believe what you're mentioning is you would basically you keep your O2 at a low enough level that it, the, it manipulates the AI into wanting to shoot your O2 instead of your weapons, or at least putting it higher on the list. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a cool strategy. The difficulties do a lot more than you would think just by looking at their descriptions. The thing I didn't know about is that difficulty affects the health of doors. <laughs> really? Uh, so how many hits it takes to get through a door? Yeah, on hard, level one blast doors are like six, and then on normal they're eight, and on easy it's something else. <laughs> All right, well that's two things I learned. That's a, <laughs> both, I had no idea. For both you and enemy ships, it's like weird. Oh, that is interesting. So you can get through doors quicker and so can enemies on hard difficulty? Mm-hmm. And um, really cool. crystal lockdown is actually breakable. It's it just sets the door health to 100. I think I think Billy found that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh you, really? You can break through crystal lockdowns. It just gives the doors a very large number of health. You just need like a broken crew. Like uh, would Math Champ create a? Uh, I think he called it a Vulcan Mantis that shoots really fast or something <laughs> to do it, right? You need something that shoots very fast. I think it has 50 health. It's it's a lot. But... <laughs> It, there's a lot of weird behind the scenes things like that. All right, well, we're going into the final phase. This was actually the one I was worried about because you have yeah. mind control for the boss and you have boarding to deal with, and he's got four crew. Mm -hmm. We will see how it goes. He sent his mantis over to an empty room. I like that. I think that was in preparation to have him not immediately destroy a system or kill a crew. So that's a cool little uh, choice he made there. Yeah, something I never would have done, but is pretty good looking at it. Mm -hmm. All right, he does one thing I do like about Halberd Beams over Flax. Sorry, Flax, is they can't miss, so it yes. helps get through these Zeltan shields pretty quick. Yeah, not being able to miss is very nice. All right, he should be able to manipulate his crew in a way that his Mantis fights the human, not the Rockman. Uh, yes, yeah, should be able to. I don't know if he will though. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't find it worth it. Losing the heal bay is pretty sketchy when you got three crew and uh, a mind control on your ship, though. Yeah, but then they'll move out of the room and he can just repair it. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, if you were in my chat, I'd be yelling at you for being so optimistic all the time. <laughs> It'll be fine. Oh, you might be ditching the fight to avoid that power surge. Yeah. Uh, abduction strats are one of my favorite for the boss when I have weak anti-boarding. You, you get boarded a couple times. Then you run, then you deal with the crew without a ship shooting at you while you're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. It hurts to do in phase three in particular, though, just due to the Zoltan shield. It's a yeah. huge bubble that you lose that on if you flee the fight. That's true, and he did take a little bit of damage to do that, but I still think it's probably the right play just because of how weak his anti-boarding is. He's 
yeah. he, things can spiral out of control really fast in phase three. I definitely agree. This is just yeah. letting them break the shields a little. Again, it'll be fine. It'll be fine because we're venting the humans. It's mm -hmm. always fine. Well, it'll be fine until that one human tries to break the oxygen, but hey, he's gone. All right. Okay, looking very good. Um, the uh, it, if he only has four crew, but at least he has very effective crew. He's got one NG, ro one rock, one mantis. Yeah, he's got diverse selection. Very well rounded. If it was four humans, I'd probably just concede, honestly. <laughs> uh, poor humans. <laughs> Vent them and call it a day, you know? At least with multiverse in particular, the humans are a little less boring. They're still boring, but they're not not quite bad. They're that fine. is true. They uh, they have what like a they like have a healer guy, an engineer guy who repairs fast, or something something like that with the different specializations. They have the separate types, but also just like the regular like human traits that they take a bit less damage from asphyxiation and fire. So ah okay, yeah, nothing exciting, but kind of a it, weaker version of uh, what kind of crystal and yeah. rocks ability. Mm -hmm. All right, this time he did not move the Mantis out of a room, so he being in, in engines kind of sucks. But he did with, deal with a lot of borders, and that's a good position that they boarded in, because that's going to take him a while to get to an important system. And also the engines have a ton of health, so he'll be fine. He can just kind of let it happen, although the loss of dodge is a little unfortunate. True, he didn't quite get the red at eight engines, but uh, he did invest pretty high. The Single missile double fire. <laughs> oh, wow, two single missiles double fire. Oh, yes. Grr, FDL. <laughs> All right, he's through the shields. Got to get that hacking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hacking getting hurt a little bit makes the the halberds a little less effective, but he has a burst, so it should be fine. Yeah, I don't know. This is no cloaking. Yeah. It's gonna be okay. Thank God More it didn't hit his weapons. <laughs> yeah. If yeah, that hit his weapons, that could have been really bad. Okay, that's a good hit. He gets his halberd all the way through. Definitely a bit sketchy, but I think he overcome the hurdle. He's got about 11 health. Uh, if he can get this halberd one more, uh, one more charge up, he's good. But that's he got the missiles offline, which is really, really, really good. All right, here we go. Coming up on the win here. Yep, there it is. Nine one nineteen fifty. Okay, GG to Wildman Super Bob. Yep, both friends had very different weapon layouts at the end, but they both worked. So there you go. They both worked, but one of them was a flackening, so... That is true. The flackening <laughs> is the flackening. <laughs> All right, I believe we're going to transition over to a chatting scene. And, um, uh, Kassalian, let me know, are, are we all going to be sticking around for the score reveal after this or no? Okay. okay. So I, I, I have really enjoyed so much chatting with both of you, uh, both... This is awesome to talk with people who are so experienced on another part of FTL that I am not. But also, just you, you guys have been great. Swift Tiger, Admiral Billy, I hope you've had a good time hanging out and chatting with us today. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was good chatting with you. And uh, let everyone know um, kind of where they can find you on Discord. I know I, if anybody hits exclamation point guest list, we do have some links. But let us know where they can kind of contact you and reach you and uh, kind of experience hyperspace and what you all are working on for themselves. Definitely the easiest place is the Multiverse Discord. That's where we post our versions. I mean, they go in the forums too, because, you know, have to have it available to download. But whenever we do, like, beta or in-development stuff, it's always in the Multiverse Discord. And that's where you can talk with us, give future suggestions, that kind of thing. Well, thank you again, Swift Tiger, especially for starting such a cool project, because we get to see the benefits of it in this tournament. So thank you so much for all your work. Yeah, thanks for having us. All righty, my friends. We're going to take one short little break, and then we're going to come back and reveal who the final winner of this final run is. And uh, we'll see you all in just a bit to see who, who pulled out this last run. Y'all rock. See you in a bit. All righty. See you.
All righty, my friends. I am back with the players of the final, final amazing run. Not only were you both awesome, we also had some awesome guests that gave us some nice spoilers for what we might learn about hyperspace soon and some really good information about how how we were able to get this whole thing happening with the help of the hyperspace devs. So before we reveal the results, I kind of I got to talk to Billy about your flackening, man. How <laughs> were you were you planning on this flackening all along? There's, I mean, I'm just assuming that I'm going to get flackening every run. It's just whether or not it happens, of course. But yeah, uh, certainly <laughs> Yeah, like it was really weird because I, I purchased that halberd beam in sector one and I had intended to use burst two halberd beam because and then I saw a heavy laser in that later sector one store mm -hmm. and I was kicking myself. There was no way for me to like, like really swap uh, that time. And yeah, then I ended up getting the burst laser, heavy laser online. Yeah, I just just kept finding flax. They're just lying all <laughs> over the dang place, apparently on my route. How, how, anyway. many, how many free ones did you get? I know it was at least one. I might have gotten two, but yeah, at least one free one. Um, and I, yeah, I might have, I might have bought three. I, I, I can't remember for sure. It's all a flak blur. It's just really, <laughs> right. That's the best kind of blur, the the four right. flak blur. Well, great job on that amazing run. Anytime there's a flak, you win my meme award. So congrats <laughs> on that. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Super Bob. You uh, had kind of a different run because you actually both had a very similar start because you both got that early halberd beam, but you kind of stuck with a super Bob. How did you feel about that run with kind of your weapon setup and what you were trying to find throughout the run? Uh, I, I think my weapon setup it, it ended up working out really well. I actually got that uh, heavy laser that he was talking about and mm -hmm. got that online first to save a little scrap. But uh, I don't think my weapons were the issue this run <laughs> ended with the double <laughs> halberd burst. It was, uh, I don't know, I felt like towards the end all I was running into was shipped with missiles and that was very frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed both of you had a lot of missile ships and never found cloaking at all. So that's always a pain. Uh, did you, Super did, Bob, were you, were, you, were you counting on that to to be something that kind of held you over if you found the cloaking? Yes, I, that I held on to a lot of scrap so I could get cloaking. And then when I realized I wasn't getting it, yeah, I, I just dumped everything into engines because I felt like that was the only way at that point I was going into because you don't want to, there's no the odds of running into that store in Sector 8 slim to none. What were you going to say, Billy? I'm sorry. Uh, did, did, you, did you end up with hacking, Super Bob? I think I purchased that in like the beginning of Sector 2. Okay, yeah, I got. I ended up getting mind control because that's what I saw at my store, uh, whatever store I went to. Okay, interesting. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty surprising that you ended up with no hacking, no cloaking, but flackening kind of, you know, fixes all ills, I guess, right? Yeah, it did a lot of work. The flackening <laughs> takes no prisoners. Well, let's reveal the scores so we don't have to keep everyone in too much suspense. Let's start with Billy Kirby because I know we saw his score. So, uh, Billy Kirby, I have your time at 103, I believe, with 59.91. So, pretty nice score. Let's see what the tournament score turns out for that one. 214.92. That's anything over 200 has been kind of kind of a good benchmark, I'd say. Cool. And so, Super Bob, uh, I only know your time. I believe it's 119.50, which I believe becomes 120, but I don't know your scrap. So drum roll, please. Let's check out Super Bob's final score here. 47.22. Well, wow, that's a pretty low FTL score, honestly. So you definitely were fighting for every little bit of scrap there, it seems like. Yeah, and I, I think I had to spend a little too much on fuel and uh, repairs, too. But hey, it was fun. Congrats on getting the win on a pretty tough cloakless seed, I guess. Uh, 154.21 is pretty low, but that does mean that our winner is Billy. So congrats to Billy. You Thank will you. be moving on for tomorrow. You feeling good about uh, doing a best of three tomorrow? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how much flack I get, I guess. <laughs> My chat loves you right now, and I hate you right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again to Super Bob for being a part and uh, for some really good play. Just couldn't quite get the, uh, get the flackening for you today, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess I just... Uh took the wrong way it happens <laughs> <laughs> well thank you both and congratulations again to billy one kirby i do have to give a reminder because i've completely forgot to tell you all tomorrow's stream will be the semifinals and finals but it will not be here uh yesterday and today has been on this stream but tomorrow it's going to be over on irie legacy stream which correct me if i'm wrong because should be www.twitch.tv backslash uh, twitch.tv backslash irie legacy is that correct 
Okay. So we will, uh, all one word, we will be posting, that will be hosted on our channel. I know Billy was going to get the word out as well. We'll probably post it on the Discord, of course, but uh, do check it out over there. I'll also tweet that out. That'll be over there. So come hang out with us there. Again, I want to give one last shout out to our uh, charity, the uh, Eleonoran Foundation over in Switzerland. It's been awesome. All the support we've gotten for donations to raise money for them. So thank you to everyone who's been donating. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Thank you to the players for being awesome. And thank you to Castalian. My pleasure. Thank you to Castalian in the background making all this run. I know he wants to go to bed. So we're going to call it a night. Thank you all again. We will see you tomorrow. And uh, we're going to take one final look at the bracket here. Hollow versus Retreat. And Billy won Kirb Kirby versus Necro Rebel. So, uh, Billy, how do, you, how do you feel going against Necro Rebel, a crazy lightning fast player? Probably going to be a coin flip. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck. I'm, I'm looking forward to another flackening, by the way. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'll, I'll get on it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks again to everybody. We're going to say good night, and we will see you all tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. <laughs>